All right, six thirty. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, without a flag, we'll waive our usual pledge of allegiance and go right into our scheduled action. Guess who's up first? Me. Yes, you are. I just have a quick update for the board on the uh, budget, uh, just to go through a few things with you tonight. But then at your next meeting on the 18th, we can finalize and we can the final uh, pieces to go to the FinCom for the by the public hearings. So just three uh, pieces. One, uh, the FY19 supplemental articles are one and two. Uh, two, just a couple of quick updates on the FY20 budget. And three, uh, the road bond. Uh, so looking first at the uh, budget transfers, um, not a very big list this year. Um, one item we're going to just transfer from the building maintenance expense budget to the salary budget, just because of the transition that occurred this year. Uh, the board had supplemented from the reserve account to the salary budget so that the uh, hirings could go forward uh, when the transition was needed in the uh, external staffing. We will reverse that and be able to restore that to your budget uh, for any year and issues. Uh, and we did in the next year's budget vote that as a bottom line budget so we'd be able to better accommodate any fluctuations going forward. Uh, the second item, unfortunately, the snow and ice budget. We have been doing terrific uh, through last week. Uh, this weekend and, and last yesterday's storm are pretty big. So I do currently have $100,000 uh, on the list uh, to handle that. Uh, but I will be checking with Todd as we go through the next week and that might be something we change a little bit before your final vote. Just, uh, a, just a little bit? Just a little bit. <laughs> We're doing great. Uh, another item I have here is uh, $100,000 for uh, school security projects. You'll recall that the Maytown meeting voted money to study school municipal security needs and buildings. Um, the school portion is still going on. Uh, and that will become something that, you know, we probably have capital budget items going forward. Uh, they were not ready this year for capital budget. Uh, updates, the study's still going, we don't have the recommendations yet. But we did uh, think if we could put some money into this account and give them some funding to start uh, if they get some recommendations that they'd like to implement over the summer, which is a good time for school typically to do things. So this is just to maybe start that, there's no identified things yet, uh, and then we would go forward, we would roll those into capital budget needs. Uh, if you just and I just want to say something that it's been a year since we've talked about these, but that we have to remember with the school building project, if it ends up being approved, we have to make sure that we design in appropriate school security measures for any new building that we do. In the building, yes. So that we aren't going back and- Yes, much easier to build them in. Yes. Put it through the design and build them. Again, if it gets approved. Yes. So it's approved. Uh, and then just a couple of small transfers needed for a couple of municipal departments. Uh, typically, the only adjustments we need is if we've had transition uh, in the departments uh, with staffing needs. Uh, we have Youth and Family Service, Selectman's Office. We had a couple of maternity needs in those uh, offices this year, and it's important that we uh, supplement the staffing to make sure everything keeps going. Um, we had uh, a transition in the assessor's office. And you'll recall when you approved uh, filling that position, the Board of Assessors had asked that there could be a slight uh, crossover of the new person coming in before the uh, Debbie Robbins retired, uh, because that retirement was occurring right in December when our values were being set, and then January when people would be coming in for abatements requests. So there was a short transition there, uh, and then legal salary with that transition. Um, so in total, that list is 348000 uh, again, with the 70000 from building maintenance, salary to expense, 100000 for snow and ice. Uh, we use the FinCom Reserve for that funding, and then we'll use 178000 uh, from the retirement assessment to fund these other items. The retirement assessment simply came in, the actual came in less than what I had in the budget in the current year, so we have some uh, funding there to, to cover that. So a pretty small list of transfers uh, on our overall budget. And then Article 2, just two small standard items, really. Uh, one, for some ambulance services and equipment, $73,500. So typically we budget kind of a base amount, and then the chief, as near the end of the year, will uh, see what he really needs, if there's additional funding, and we include that here. We fund that with ambulance revenue. Um, and then if we had a revalue year, we did have some additional uh, services that the Board of Assessors needed for the revaluation, $26,000, and we'll fund that with the overlay surplus. So pretty minor um, article one and two. Uh, and then moving on just with your FY20 budget, uh, page four, just 
um, is a reminder of what your overall budget proposal is. Uh, it's a very comprehensive budget that covers lots of needs. About a 3.5% increase to our school municipal operating budget. That's really good, stable, sustainable operating budget growth. Uh, just over a million dollars in uh, base capital for school and municipal needs, and that's super important to make sure we stay up to date with our equipment and buildings. We are able to supplement that capital again, as we've done the last couple of years, um, doing some additional projects, important projects that could go forward. And for that, we are using free cash uh, and the hotel meals tax. And then we are staying on track with what we need in our stabilization fund, $125,000 transfer, and staying right on track with OPEB, $1.44 million uh, transfer into the OPEB trust. Uh, and so really, you put together that great budget. It went out in February. On page five, there's just really just a couple of small updates uh, that we'll need to do to that budget. Basically, two assessments that have come in different than what I had in the original budget. Uh, an accounting issue um, that I just need to clarify with our recreation department. And I just want to comment on the health insurance budget. So with the two assessments, we have mentioned this one before, the Blue Hills Regional School. Uh, we were carrying a higher number in that original budget. We have the actual <coughs> assessment now. Uh, the final assessment is about $30,000 less than what's in that original budget, so I would like to go in and make that change uh, to the budget before we finalize it. Uh, the sewer department, we have the MWRA annual assessment, the final assessment uh, just over $3.1 million. Uh, that's about $43,000 higher than what I had in the original budget. Um, this is funded from sewer revenue, so we will go in and adjust both the revenue side and the expense side. There's no overall budget impact. Pam, what was the increase in the health care? What was the final percentage? Um, so the health care, uh, the final rates came in just at the end of last week. Uh, HR is just kind of running our schedules. The average rate increase is about three, three to three and a half percent. Uh, so pretty good. Mm -hmm. A couple of the plans have higher rate increases, so that's why we just have to run our schedule to see. Uh, most of all, uh, most of the senior plans had a limited increase, no increase, or less than two percent. So I think they'll be happy with that. So really not a bad year. Our original budget, we had a 5% increase in the overall budget. I don't think we'll need to make any change to that. Uh, but we will just kind of finalize that Thanks. over the next couple of days. Uh, and then the one other item is really just an administrative kind of an accounting revision. Um, we've had a couple of these in the last couple of years uh, where, where DOR is kind of going through and cleaning up things and asking people to um, kind of make some corrections. Uh, with our rec department, uh, Full-time positions uh, should be funded in the town budget, not in the rec revolving. Uh, so we have a couple in the rec revolving positions that probably years ago started as part-time positions that are now full-time. We're just going to move those over to the town budget, but the revenue comes also. So there's no budget impact, it's just an accounting cleanup. Uh, funds will come over, be shown in the town budget, the revenue will come also. And when we show that at town meeting, I'm also going to just uh, with a little notation, show a restatement of FY19, so that people will see clearly we're not adding all kinds of new positions to the rec. That it's just a. Will mean, that require a vote every year to transfer the funds? No, from now on they'll always be budgeted in that way. Good. So it's just this first year. So 170k is not just a couple of positions, I'm guessing. Okay. How many? Full it's actually positions? four positions. Okay. Can you tell us what? Those? Yes. Program manager position, uh, the assistant aquatic manager, uh, a rec assistant from the administrative position for the department, uh, and the aquatic specialist. That one is one of the newer positions they asked about, kind of consolidating a lot of part time pool hours into someone who's there uh, more on a full time basis, especially to open the pool in the morning. So, again, those are all currently already positions in place being paid. Uh, just in the revolving account, and we're going to put those over in the uh, town budget. <coughs> and those are the only changes to the FY20 budget, so a really um, kind of quiet year. Sometimes there's no changes needed, uh, but, but that's really it at this point. And then I just wanted to mention on the road bond, um, so page 7 and 8. At your um, next meeting, we'll have to ask you to vote on that bond. Uh, only the select board can put uh, an article on 
of the election, the Prop 2 and a half debt exemption. Um, so you'll need to vote approval of that to go on the ballot, uh, as well as uh, providing the specific language of the question to the town clerk. Uh, so on page eight, I've shown examples of previous uh, times we've had the debt exemption questions. And then at the bottom of the page are recommendation uh, for what this question would look like this year. As you uh, might recall from other um, debt exemptions, it's very kind of limited what you can say. You really just have to describe what it will fund and what the uh, request is. So it's pretty standard language. Okay, um, question for you. What do you think the, at this point in time, what would the 10-year bond borrowing rate be approximately? The rate? Yeah. I think would be still you know, about the rate. Down at three, three and a half percent. Okay. Uh, and we'll see how the discussion goes with finance commission. But I would ask that um, before we get to town, before we get to the election, um, as this does require a vote at the ballot, um, we be prepared or we even be prepared with finance commission, whether it be tonight or at the end of March to tell them what plan B is. So if the ballot question happened not to pass, even though it may be well planned and thought through, mm -hmm. um, we have just a week between the two meetings to have an alternative plan or else we forfeit doing any of the projects that are listed on this, which would be a very undesirable outcome if we didn't have any funding plan for at least a portion of them as of, yeah. just think, in case. Yeah. Better to be prepared yeah. and hopefully not need it. Um, anyway, but I think we'll see how the discussion also goes with Finance Commission to see if they have to say. Uh, so that's really it. So again, we would have you at your next meeting on the 18th, finalize those Article 1 and 2, um, those final budget changes, the assessments, Health, we don't think anything, but we'll take a look. And then that rec recreation change, and then approve the final language for the ballot as well as voting to uh, place that in the ballot and we'd get that over to the town clerk. And right after your meeting, we always send that over to the FinCom so that they see all of those uh, updates uh, before their final hearings uh, at the end of March. I have a technical question on the revolving account with recreation. Marie, does Marie handle that? Do you control? We don't. Yeah, okay. So you know exactly what goes into the account and therefore what is transferred over? Okay. Yes, so, yes. Uh, so all of that's handled on our books. Marie handles yeah. all of that. That's what I thought. I was uh, it's wondering. really just, you know, again, those positions are already in place. They're just coded to the revolving with the revenue coming there. Um, we currently have a transfer every year out of the revolving two positions already in. Our other full time positions, director, director, the aquatics director. Uh, I'm thinking of the people's names, I know their titles are in yeah. Sue and uh, Taryn, and our, our main people are already in the town budget. A transfer comes from the record revolving, or we make that transfer every year. We will just be making a larger amount, yeah. okay. uh, and the positions coded over there versus in the record. Yeah, I don't. If, if the ballot question doesn't pass on the override, I'm not. I don't want to frame it that we then have to do something. A, an option maybe to do nothing. Well, and I think Todd has explained when he's been in different Com before, um, but we'll have him you know, do some more analysis for you. Is that he's tried to say a lot of the pieces are inter interconnected. So yeah, I just was thinking of the Dedham Westwood Water oh, District right, doing right. Um, road disruption. Uh, with their project, um, the importance of bringing that road up to uh, standard is really what I was thinking of and, and where I, I thought we should be prepared. Yeah, yeah the bill, bill make it on town floor. Hmm? Amend it on town floor. Well, that's what we need to hear how we do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll bring that into you next. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the Denim Western Law District will make the road drivable. It may not be at our standards, but if we have to defer question a year or two. Those are also options. Mm -hmm. Any questions? It's really it. Almost almost at the end. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so next on our agenda, we have review annual town meeting warrant items. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Um, so yeah, I have. Uh, that's what I have next. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There was it yes. preceded by an email that was out of order. Yes. Okay. So next, we have to review the language for the articles. Um, I'm assuming you all had a chance to read it. Any changes in this? Um, are we going to discuss the peg article? I see we have people who might be interested in it. Okay. Um, did you want to be heard on the peg issue, or Mr. Cummings? Uh, yes, so we've had um, open communications with, with Mike and Pam the last couple of weeks, and to be agreeing with um, Pam and Mike that. Uh, we should remove it. We should just remove it at this time. It was, it was good to wait and see if we needed it, and okay. at this time, I don't think we need it. Okay. Mike, I want to say that I thought the um, communication from KP Law on the matter was very comprehensive in a very um, thoughtful way. I might not have agreed with some of the subtleties, <laughs> and really only subtleties. I thought that it was well thought out and um, well articulated, so I just wanted to express appreciation for that. Yeah, I only had a comment on the tip warrant article, which we all know I oppose. I think it's totally inappropriate that we talk about how this money could potentially be spent. When we don't have the authority to, to levy for this money right now, and we're talking about how we would spend it. Mm -hmm. right the board has never approved that. We're still Correct. On. Correct. It's only a discussion. That's all we have. I'm sorry, I thought you said language for the warrant articles. No, it's, it's not in the it's not warrant in, article language. Oh, okay. It's just in the oh, narrative to us oh, as okay. a discussion. And I apologize item. for that because after the last meeting, it, it was not any action taken on that. And I forgot to, to edit that comment out. But um, did we, um, Mike, you had indicated to us the possibility of having um, one of the elements of the motion made at last week's meeting pulled out, and that be um, for the warrant article to go forward? Not Nothing specifically to do with the action we took on citizens, but the warrant article itself. Correct. Um, and I guess my question to the board is, would we like to do that? To revote that as its own like, action item. Wait, can, we, can we just go follow the agenda and get yep. another two housekeeping out and remove the housekeeping article and the accounting for the bag access? Sure. Sorry, I'm reading it from paper, so I'm okay. going to leave off here. Page 17. Thank you. There you are. Yep. Back. Going you are. back. Those two. Two articles, yes. Um, I move that we remove the article titled Housekeeping as sponsored by the Planning Board and is, as it is no longer needed for this town meeting. I think there are two housekeeping two, articles, two house. so we, we remove one article <coughs> titled Housekeeping. That's correct. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I move that we remove the article titled Accounting Peg Access Funding Article. Um, pursuant to the recommendation we've received from both our town administrator and special counsel to address this subject matter here. And I just clarify that that was covering two issues. That was covering uh, one, the FCC funding issue, but also uh, there's a DOR funding issue that Pam has uh, the accounting. Yeah, on the accounting. Issue. And that can be put off right here. But it's one article. For wow. correct. It was all. It was embedded in one article. article. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Yes, now we have the reconsideration of the tax increment financing discussion. So back to my question, I was wondering if we wanted to pull out and vote as an individual item support of the warrant article, giving um, a approval from town meeting to give the select board authorization to enter into TIFs should we deem it appropriate. And I guess my question was, are we still going to put the citizens' vote before the town meeting? It's not a citizen's vote. It's just the warrant just article warrant about vote. whether or not to do TIFs. So citizens, it's not a town meeting vote. So in essence, if we walk in a town meeting and approves our general authority, 
citizens is automatically approved. Correct. So I oppose reconsideration. Okay. But you didn't oppose it for. I'm, I'm just I, I'm trying to figure out. Um, Brigham Women's Hospital was a TIF. Brigham Women's Hospital has, is not is not a TIF. Well, it, they did not have they did not have permission to go into University Station unless this board allowed it. Right. So the relief was on the project development agreement. No, the relief had to come from the board of select. Right. On the project development. And so we gave them a TIF. No, it should have been no, by it was a As a matter of law, that's just a such an inaccurate statement. No, it's not. Council's here. Council, did we give Brigham a TIF? Uh, not, not called a TIF. No, it was not called a TIF. Right. You gave him a, well. Do we have any authority to tax Brigham and Women's Hospital? No, you do not. No. What you, you had, have to let them you them. had a contract, Correct. contractual agreement with the developer of Westwood Station uh, that a nonprofit could not develop go down there. The idea there was there were a lot of town resources spent and you didn't want you know them to flip it to Harvard and thus the town wouldn't get any uh, tax revenue, which actually happened with the water town arsenal about 20 years ago. Uh, so we included a deed restriction that said that any nonprofit would have to come in and would have to negotiate a payment in lieu of taxes with the Board of Selectmen before they could you know, go to University Station. I just said per square foot it was the largest payment in taxes Brigham has ever paid. I don't know. So they're very different. I think one's defensible and one's not. Well, one ends and one does not. This has a 13 year limitation and the other one never ends. 25% for the rest of the entire time. In my opinion, is both are defensible, so isn't that interesting? We're all in three different places. All right, so moving along to our other business. Um, we have the fourth quarter capital release. We have expenditures of $886,900 for municipal, $867,000. No, no, no. That's what we have in aggregate. The fourth quarter stamps. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, so fourth quarter capital, we have $121,666 uh, to be released. Some for user end technology, uh, traffic safety cameras and equipment, school roofing. And it totals, again, as I said, $121,666. I move to release the fourth quarter capital totaling $121,666 to the designated three categories. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Our next meeting will be Monday, March 18th at 7.30 at the police station for a full meeting. Uh, we will adjourn into the FinCom meeting and then uh, Adjourn after the FinCon meeting for our meeting this evening. I move we adjourn into the Finance Commission meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.